Dr. Sanjay Gaikwad, author, orator and college teacher. Friends, in the last video we have seen grammar problems and remedies. And those problems and remedies are given to us by Dr. Ashok Tharath. And so I request you, if you haven't watched that video, do watch that video. I am going to give you the link of that video in the description box. Friends, again, today's video is very, very, very special because in this session, we are going to experience the magic of words. Yes, the magic of words. Words are the building blocks. No sentence can be formed without words. Such is the importance of words. Vocabulary, therefore, is an integral part of spoken English. And unfortunately, there are several misconceptions of vocabulary. Some people may mug up 10 words per day. Others say always look for new words. Still others say add a word a day and so on. But there are easier and more practical ways of enriching vocabulary. Dr. Ashok Thorath, who is the founder director and principal of Institute of Advanced Studies in English at Fune is going to introduce these magical steps to strengthen the English vocabulary. Let us see what Dr. Ashok Thorat offers. Vocabulary normally is defined as the number of words that each speaker has. At different levels there are different numbers associated for example, school children are supposed to know something like 5000 words. Whereas, a college going student is supposed to know something like 7000 words. A teacher in a college is supposed to know 10,000 words. And a good teacher knows more than 12,000 words. Authors know more than 15,000 words. English has tremendous number of words. Some people estimate that English has 2.5 billion words. Whereas, for any comfortable use of English, whether it comes to writing or speaking, you hardly need 15 to 17,000 words. So you just don't have to bother about the entire English vocabulary. Just master a few words. And for this purpose, I have a very practical advice. And this I'm going to give in three different parts. Part one. Most of the English words has have multiple meanings. For example, the word draw, D-R-A-W, draw. It's a simple word normally acquired during school days. The meaning of draw is to draw a picture. If you ask an employed person what's the meaning of draw, he or she will say to draw salary. The meaning has changed. If you ask a banker or somebody from corporate sector what's the meaning of draw, he or she will say to draw conclusions. If you look up a dictionary, a good dictionary, you will come across not less than 11 different senses or meanings of the word draw. Unfortunately, when we look up a dictionary, we normally equate one word with one meaning and tend to forget the remaining parts given in the dictionary. This is just 1% use of a good dictionary. So, if you acquaint yourself with, let us say, on an average, four to five meanings of a word, and if you just have 5,000 words with you, you can have, you can claim 25,000 words in English. You just need to be a little sensitive to different meanings of words. Second part, words have alternatives, and this helps you use a proper word in a proper place. For example, walk, W-A-L-K, walk. Walk is a very well-known word. Everybody knows it. Every school-going child knows walk. But unfortunately, they tend to use this word in every place. For example, man walks, donkey walks, mouse walks, tiger walks, horse walks, and so on and so forth. Now the question is, do all these animals move the same way? Not at all. If you look at the movements of a mouse, Mouse runs into a corner, comes back, runs into another corner, comes back. Man doesn't walk like a mouse or a mouse doesn't move like a man. 
and therefore we need separate words and precisely for this reason we say man walks mouse scampers tiger prowls horse gallops a donkey struts a deer leaps a rabbit bounds so each animal movement has a specific word and in the absence of these words you tend to use one common verb one common word describing movements and that is walk and therefore you need to know that words have alternatives and most of the english words have alternatives which work in specific places a different word in a different place so if you want to use a proper word in a proper place you should acquaint yourself with alternatives part 3 english words have shades and if you get yourself accustomed with english with the shades of english words your speaking becomes effective for example the words like happy delighted and cheerful look synonymous most of the speakers of english they tend to use these three words intermittently one word for the other word and this makes the problem graver but if you struggle or if you play with these words you will understand that each of these words has a unique sense for example the word happy happy is a general state of mind which is a result of or a cumulative result of a variety of factors and it stays longer in a mind suppose i ask you are you happy in your college you will think of the sitting arrangement the library the classrooms the teaching the canteen the playground and as a result of your response to all these facilities you will say i am happy with my college or i am not happy with my college so happiness is a cumulative impact or result of a variety of factors delight is a sudden and a powerful joy <clears throat> i'll give you an example if there is a working lady who has a child let us say 2 year old or 3 year old child and the lady comes home at 5 o'clock after the office hours the child keeps waiting for mother and focuses his or her attention on the road on which the mother walks home the moment the child sees the mother from a distance the child is so jubilant child starts jumping and dancing in the balcony or at the door of the house this happiness is a very powerful happiness which can be described by the word delight normally grown ups are delighted on the day of salary or when they win a lottery ticket so delight is different from happy cheerfulness is an inborn quality of human face it's a natural spontaneous expression on your face and therefore you cannot put on cheerfulness an old actor or actress in a bollywood film for example is normally cheerful but we also have 20 year old young people with square faces so cheerfulness is different from happiness and happiness is different from delighted so don't use these words one for the other so if somebody says i'm happy to meet you the person you are also happy to meet him but if he says i'm delighted to meet you you are also delighted and the intimacy grows so this learning of senses of words help you develop contacts good relationships healthy relations and make your speaking effective so this is about vocabulary in short so my dear friends i dr gaikwad request you to follow the advice given by dr ashok thorat enrich your vocabulary and enrich your english thank you